Well, state football is very special in South Australia. They love nothing better than beating the Big V. John Casey takes a look at the history of interstate rivalry between South Australia and Victoria. In the late 1870s, South Australia's first team to tour Victoria left the harbour here at Port Adelaide. But before the players boarded the steamship Aldinga, they were asked to sign a strange agreement, stating they'd remain sober throughout the four-match tour. It was a regulation the Victorians could have used five years later when their players went on what the papers of the day described as an orgy of destruction here at the Crown and Scepter Hotel in Adelaide's main thoroughfare, King William Street. Found guilty the next day by a magistrate, the VFL later cleared the players of any wrongdoing, so starting a cold war that saw state games abandoned for several years. These days, South Australian football has a new headquarters and heart here at Football Park, and its face has changed as well. Tony McGuinness has played for South Australia as a teenage sensation, as an expatriate Victorian, and now as part of Crow Mania. Thank goodness there was still a little iced coffee in these two. When you're in Melbourne, you do feel like a Victorian. I mean, I had six years there and certainly became that way every year. And the guys that have been there even longer than I have probably feel an allegiance to Victoria as a state. But I'm, I'm sure when they come back here and we get them back for a couple of days under our claws that they feel like a South Australian again. The natural maturing of state of origin football has been supplemented by synthetic changes brought about by football's officialdom. It's interesting this year that we have someone like Nathan Buckley uh, playing the best football in the state and can't play, yet we can have Wayne Carey, who has never played here and can play. Um, well, the more, more intriguing one is Mitchell White, of course, who was born in West Australia, never played a league game here, probably doesn't want to be here. Uh, he's, you know, he's said quite clearly he thinks he's a West Australian, but he's eligible to us. And they're the, they're the rules that I guess there has to be some rules. There's also a school of thought that the profile of state of origin needs to be lifted. I think we can learn some very strong lessons from the rugby who have been able to be have been able to promote these state of origin games as almost an elite contest. Let's get into it. But as far as bottom lines go, there's definitely no substitute for winning. Players have got an enormous amount of pride in their own performance, um, in that of their state and that of their club. So it doesn't matter what jumper they pull on, whether it's a Fitzroy jumper, an Adelaide Crows jumper or a, a Victorian jumper. I think people still, even though we hear about state of origin being uh, a little bit of a nuisance at time to time, I think that comes from the club point of view, but from the players' point of view and from the supporters' point of view, they really love to see the best together and seeing a great contest. And usually that's the case in nearly every game. Well, Billy Goggin, you're right again because it's been a terrific match and a great contest. At half-time, South Australia by four goals. Back with more after the break.